Happy to be joined here on the Derek Diamond Experience with my very special guest, actor Rick Cosnett. Rick, how are you, sir? Hi, Derek. I'm very, very well, thank you. Coming to you from nice, warm Australia today. Yeah, and it's interesting because it, I always forget that Australia has like the opposite um, like seasons that we yep. do in America. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm in Florida, so it's just now starting to get cold. So it's it's Even interesting. In Florida. I feel like Florida's yeah, yeah, is we get like two months of cold weather, and then the rest is either uh, yeah. warm or obnoxious. I know. I grew up in Africa so. and Australia, so I. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, the, I just, I'm going from summer to summer, summer, summer this time. Uh, yeah, just can't, can't escape it. But yeah, it, just running away good. from if my you... problems, basically. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, Metaphor. well, first, yeah, also, uh, well, you know, first of all, thank you for taking the time to, to chat with me today. Um, over the past, you know, several years, I'm sure you get this all the time. Huge fan of The Flash tv show which of course you played the character of of eddie thawne and now that that show has run its course how do you feel about you know the overall run of the show and kind of the the legacy that it already has because you have so many people that love shows like the flash arrow legends of tomorrow that whole dc cw universe so yeah how do you feel about the the show's run and the response that it got from the fans just really grateful, very, very grateful to have been a part of it. You know, there's so many different jobs that I could have got. And um, I just, I, I don't think I even realize now how lucky I have been and, and am continuing to be now, you know, that I could have got a part on Days of Our Lives, but two weeks later I got a part on The Vampire Diaries instead, which just had this huge international fan base and then the flash which we didn't think would go anywhere well we hoped it would go somewhere you know it was a spin-off of arrow but we didn't know if we'd go past the pilot and then past the 13 episodes and then it did which was fantastic and then um and then and then i also died at the end of season one so um that was also like uh, you know this roller coaster but then i'd also you know uh dreamed of dying dramatically on television since i was in grade three and this little boy called rick in thunder sub died and everyone cried over him so that dream also came true be careful what you wish for and then i kind of come back. but it was really nice to come back and really book end the series i was there on the first day and the last day so that was very special for me just to have the closure and um you know just it, it's it's been a very significant part of my life and i um, just so grateful for to be able to be a part of it because it's uh, the character and the story is so special to me and it's so wonderful to see people um feeling the same way um you know and i've got long last like life lasting friendships from that show and um it's the biggest thing that's really happened in my career so i'm just really grateful and love all to speak to fans about it love to go to comic cons and um it's it's really it's really afforded me so much in my career so i'll always be so grateful for it and there it is it's always there set in stone it's not like a play where you have to do it over and over again which is kind of cool <laughs> yeah right and and what i love about what you said is you know despite the fact that the show is about a superhero and you have these you know heroes and villains and these cool effects and everything what made the show great are the characters and the storylines, which you know of you being a big part of you know that that first season, but then you get to come back and be the villain for the fi the finale, which I thought was a really great way to kind of book in the show. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the character was definitely unfinished, um, as so many people felt, and so um, what a better way than you know, to just stretch at him out and really like, um, you know, he was just all the b best parts of me. I wish I was like Eddie, just rising above <laughs> everything, <laughs> never getting jealous or just irritatingly awesome at everything. <laughs> um, and then, you know, to sort of have that negative voice come back around and, and really um, finally, you know, because we, he has that voice too. He just chose not to, to go with it. And that's the whole thing about comics, which I think is so wonderful. It's the negative versus the positive, the dark versus the light, the good versus evil. And um, I really thought, I thought it really captured that. I was really happy with the script. I just absolutely loved it. Um, so, yeah, you know, we... It, yeah, we, you know, all these wonderful actors from Broadway, Jesse Martin and, and Grant and, and Tom and, and, you know, um, 
Candace getting to interact with her, Carlos and Danielle. It was, it was a wonderful way, um, a pre very precious story. We all, we all put our hearts and souls into it. And so it's just so great to see it, it succeed the way it did, you know. I'm going to have to steal that phrase, irritatingly awesome. That you <laughs> that, I've never heard that before. That's so cool. Yeah. So uh, kind of transitioning from that, you recently had a film um, come out called Shoulder Dance, which has been doing quite well in the in the festival circuit is one, you know, best LGBTQ film, uh, best drama from uh, multiple festivals. So um, yeah. what was your experience like, um, you know, creating and being a part of that film and, you know, kind of seeing it to its to its completion? It was one of the, uh, you know, one of a, sem sem a few seminal um, experiences for me, just in the in the way that I'm pro progressing, I feel like in my work, um, because it was a character that I never really played before, just so rambunctious, confident, crazy, sensual, um, just really out there and you know, my girlfriend in the film, Maggie Gehar, who, you know, from people would know, well, from Gotham, just as she played it to the nth degree as well, we kind of felt like the villains in Annie, you know, Bernadette Peters and Tim Curry just coming in to mess shit up um, with these kind of repressed, this repressed gay couple. Um, and <laughs> it was just delicious to, this, the script was so good. It was written so naturally. The dialogue, which is so difficult to write, was just so natural. Um, and I got to use my, my natural voice, like my accent, my natural accent, which I don't know what the hell it is, but I just spoke, um, which was great because he's foreign and, you know, he left the States when he was 16. Um, so that was also a very cool experience. I think Jesse Martin said to me from the flash that, um, you know, when I get to speak in my natural voice, things are just going to blow up for me. <laughs> so I always think of that in the back of my mind. And this was sort of that experience. And, um, you know, um, I lost track of what you were asking, but, um, it was just, it was just quite something. Yeah. It's basically just the overall experience of, of making the film because from the trailer, you know, it, it instantly captures this kind of fun feel like you know that that kind of like there's obviously bits of romance there's some over the topness there's some drama there it, it looks like you know such a fun movie to watch and i'm i'm excited to you know i haven't had a chance to watch it yet but i'm excited to to get to see that you know here really soon yeah everyone says that it's just they say it's so easy to watch um and it's just really just fun you know it's fun it's that it's a wild weekend but it also ends up meaning so much to people because it brings up a lot of issue issues you know that and everyone feels differently about it about you know monogamy about relationships about marriage um about friendship, um, about our kind of instincts, our feelings, about freeing yourself inside, about love, and, and that that can be sort of a catalyst and so sort of valuable, that freedom and that love can be valuable to people and help them move forward and be happier in their lives, you know, and relationships. So, yeah. And that that's why film and TV to me are the greatest art forms to ever exist, you know, not to knock like paintings or sculptures, but you can create so many emotions and express mm -hmm. so many viewpoints, but you do it in a way that's not so like on the nose. Like you can have fun watching a movie, but exactly. then you're like, huh, that's, I, you know, didn't realize that until now. So you, Derek, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head there. We were talking about this. Um, so I'm developing something at the moment and this film really does that so well as well you know it, it's entertainment right and it's fun and funny but then it hits you subconsciously um and and you take away you take something away from it because i feel like our brains are wired to try and um optimize you know our lives and so inevitably we try and take something away from you know we don't try but inevitably be, you know we see that mirror and it gives us a perspective on certain issues that we might be struggling with. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. As we start to wrap up here, um, what, what do you have coming up 
next for you? You know, now that the the strike has ended, you know, we're hearing all about all these projects that are resuming or yes, and that we getting back couldn't talk about for so long. Right, right. Um, it was so irritating, um, but also amazing. But um, you know what happened, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for my new to my union. Um, right. But uh, I have um, a, a movie coming out uh, early next year um, called The Exchange. I'm not sure of the date yet, um, but it's going to be on a, a, a big platform. And um, that's actually with Taylor Frey, who is in this movie with me as well. Um, and it's also got Kyle Richards in from The Real Hustles of Beverly Hills. It's a really great um, a romantic comedy. I play an English character and we do this like house swap. It's kind of like the holiday um, in a way. Um, and yeah, I just, I cannot wait to see it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, and then I also have an Apple TV show coming out uh, called Palm Royale with um, Kristen Wiig and Laura Dern, Alison Janney, Carol Burnett, Ricky Martin. It's a star studded cast and it's set in the 60s in Palm Beach, Florida um, in high society. And it is uh, quite something. It's, the budget is insane and I'm hoping it's going to be really good. Um, so that's going to be super fun. Um, I play Sergeant Tom Sanka, um, Palm Beach Police. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. I mean, you sold me on the cast itself, but the 60s setting and in West Palm Beach, I'm, I'm there. So that as a teenager, really I would really have funny. died to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, do you have a website or social media you'd like to plug so the viewers and listeners can follow you? Yes, yeah, so it would be great. Follow me on at Rick Cosnet on Instagram and also on X. Um, or if you want on TikTok, I'm starting to be on TikTok. I think it's official underscore Rick Cosnet because Rick Cosnet was already taken and <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Well, Rick, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. This was great. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Really cool.